I've been the Turo host for a very long time, with nearing 5,000 trips, 30 cars, and over a million dollars in lifetime earnings. And over the years, I've learned a lot about how to optimize earnings and make more money. And the truth is, making more money with your Turo fleet is probably easier than you think. But before we dive in, if you are interested in learning about more resources, about car sharing, how to optimize your fleet, how to make more money, I do have a bunch of different resources down in the description below, from the equipment that I use to the accounting group that I use, Shared Economy Tax, as well as some great resources that you can use whenever you're buying a car. And of course, my car sharing masterclass is down there as well. The first and one of the most commonly slept on ways to make more money on Turo is is to have any minimum trip length selected. This means that you allow one day or less trips with your vehicles. On Turo, you have the ability to have a minimum trip length from anywhere between any and five days. This means that if you select any, you can have somebody book your car for a couple of hours or one day. And if you select five days, that means the minimum amount of days that somebody can book your car is five days, meaning that the majority of trips or all of your trips that you have have to be five days or longer. If you scroll through Turo Facebook groups, there is a very common piece of advice that people give that you should have a two day minimum on your vehicles. And in my opinion, this is a mistake. The amount of one day bookings that you will get with your fleet that will then extend into multi day or even multi week or month trips is significantly more than you probably would ever think. In fact, as I record this video, about 30% of my fleet is out on rentals that have exceeded one week. Some have even exceeded one month. And every one of these trips started out as one day rentals that have been extending every single day or every other day. If you have anything more than an any day minimum on your vehicles, you are absolutely leaving money on the table because a large portion of one day renters do turn into extended renters and they're simply booking one day at a time because they can't afford to do any more than that. Or they may not know their schedule or they're just looking for flexibility. If you aren't currently doing this, I encourage you to experiment even with just one car for one month and I'm willing to bet that you will be surprised at the results. On the same topic is encouraging extensions. A lot of Turo guests forget to extend. They either forget, they don't think about it, or they don't realize that they need to extend until the reservation is already coming to an end. By encouraging and reminding guests to extend, you would be absolutely shocked to see how many people go ahead and do it for one or multiple days at a time. And the way that you can remind guests to do this is extremely easy. First, you're going to go into Turo, go to the scheduled messages, click create new template. Then you're going to label the template something like end of trip reminder, extension reminder. You're going to set the schedule to trip three fourths time, choose a time being immediately and then after. Then you're going to type in your message, apply to all listings and click save. For me with my fleet, this is the message that I write. I hope that you've enjoyed this car so far. Note that your rental is scheduled to end at reservation end date, reservation end time. If you would like to extend your trip, use the Turo app to check if the car is available. If it is, request a change through the app and I'll accept it right away. If you choose not to extend upon return of the car, please park the car at the lot, put the key back where you found it and you'll be all set. Please let me know if you have any questions. By reminding guests to extend a trip, you will increase your extension rate dramatically. And the best part is by setting an automation to do this, you can do it without even thinking about it. The third tactic that you can use to make more money is to request for everything. Okay, maybe this isn't a source for making more money, but it certainly is for cutting costs and recouping your money. I cannot tell you how many Turo hosts I talk to, majority new Turo hosts, but occasionally experienced ones as well, that don't request for things like small toll charges or small gas charges. For my fleet, I have a policy of requesting for everything. With the exception of mileage, which I do view on a somewhat case-by-case -case basis, for example, if somebody rents my car for a month and they had 3,000 miles that they could drive and they drive 20 miles over, I won't end up requesting for that. But if somebody has a one-day rental and they go 20 miles over, I will request for that. So there is a bit of a sliding scale whenever it comes to mileage, but for the most part, I do end up charging for that too. But for everything other than mileage, it doesn't matter what the fee is. It could be a $40 toll charge or a $3 gas charge. I'm going to be requesting for reimbursement. The reason is, is because while $0.40 cents or $3 may not seem like a lot here and there, this amount definitely does add up and it can end up making a huge impact on your finances long term. Most tolls in Dallas are between $0.20 cents and $2.50, depending on the highway that you're on, as well as how long you're on the toll road. A $0.20 cents or $2.50 toll charge isn't going to break the bank, but these charges add up extremely fast, especially if you're somebody that has a growing fleet. In fact, I will show up on the screen here my toll statement from just December of 2023. And there are 56 pages of this. With my fleet, we spend anywhere between two and three grand on tolls each and every month. And all of that toll bill is made up of small incremental tolls that compound on top of one another every single day. 
it adds up. And as far as gas goes, it's the exact same story. We spend about $900 in gas each and every month. And if we didn't end up requesting for even the small charges, this would be a big chunk of our monthly expenses that we would never end up getting paid back for. And while I know $3 here, $4 there may not seem like a big deal whenever it comes to gas, that could ultimately end up being anywhere between 10 and 15% of your earnings for that trip. And again, it adds up. The small things matter, request reimbursements every time, it will help your bottom line. Number four on this list, and this is going to be a controversial one, and that is to avoid the 90% plan unless you are a very experienced host. There are very experienced Turo hosts out there that know how to navigate the 90% plan, and for them, the 90% plan works very well, and it makes a lot of sense. For example, like Alvin, this is a host that I made a video about just last week. He has 200 cars, he has all of them on the 90% plan because he knows how to navigate this and minimize losses. But new hosts don't fit into this category, and the amount of hosts that I talk to who end up losing money on the 90% plan far exceed the number of new hosts that end up making this plan work in their favor. Navigating the 90% plan for insurance is tricky, and if you end up wanting to go this route, you either have to learn how to A, navigate working it out with the insurance company of either the guest or the third party, B, learn how to get the guest to pay for the damage directly, or three, have enough earnings to where you can offset the cost of this and you just take it as an L. Let me give you a for instance that just happened with my fleet this week as I'm recording this. My Lake and Navigator was in a minor accident on its very first rental. It was actually backed into at a PF Chang's. My guest was pretty pleasant to deal with throughout the entire process, but they did purchase Turo Insurance, which means that they had a $500 deductible, which meant that the max amount that my guest was gonna pay out of pocket would be $500 if Turo was gonna charge them directly. Which means that in the case of my Lincoln, it would really only make sense to work it out with the guest directly in two scenarios. Either A, if the damage was less than $500, so it ended up saving my guest money. Or option B, if I could file an insurance claim with the third party's insurance who hit my car. Because of the fact that the insurance claim was going to be more than $500, I didn't even try to get the guest to pay for it directly. Instead, I went right to the third party insurance and I ended up filing a claim with their insurance company. But this insurance company was extremely slow to deal with, they didn't respond to my messages, and they were pretty much MIA. With Turo, whenever you opt to work it out with the guest directly, you do have a set number of days to determine whether this route will be successful, and if you determine that it will not be successful within this period of time, you still get the option to escalate that claim to Turo. So after about two and a half weeks of trying to work it out with the third party's insurance company with absolutely no response, we ended up going and escalating this to Turo. Three days after we escalated the claim to Turo, Turo ended up paying us $4,200 for the damage. We had to pay a $750 deductible, which meant that we had about $3,400 that we were paid out directly for this damage claim. And while we will end up getting the damage to our bumper fixed, we have made connections with local shops over the years, which means that we will be able to get this damage fixed for significantly less than $3,400. Meaning that at the end of the day, we're actually able to make a profit off of this damage. I do not think that the 90% plan works for new hosts, hosts with cheap cars, like the cars that I own, or hosts with just a few cars. Otherwise, I would personally recommend the 80% plan. The fifth way to make more money on Turo is to have 24-7 availability on. I've talked about this topic a lot over the years, but it is a topic that there seems to be a lot of confusion around. On Turo, you have the ability to set your availability to specific hours. And with the availability setting, you can either block off certain times where your cars cannot be booked, or you can have your cars set to always available. And always available means in theory, your cars could get booked out 24 seven, any day, any time. I have my cars set to always available. But I do find that there does seem to be a lot of confusion around what always available actually means. Because people oftentimes ask me of, hey, if you have your cars on always available, what do you do if your car gets booked out at 2 a.m.? Or how do you end up dealing with it whenever your car gets booked out at 1 a.m. for a 5 a.m. pickup? Or 11 p.m. for a 6 a.m. pickup? Or whatever the case is. And while always available technically does mean that you are always available, what it actually does in practice is it makes your availability always open and it leaves you the flexibility to then customize your availability in the calendar settings of the app. If you have your availability as a host set to unavailable Monday through Friday from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., this means that if your car is prepped and ready to go, your car will not be able to be booked between the hours of 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. But this, in my opinion, is leaving money on the table. What I recommend with every Turo host is you should be cleaning and prepping the car upon the return of a vehicle. I know of some hosts who, whenever a car gets returned, they will go to the vehicle, they will take pictures, but they actually won't prep that vehicle until the car ends up getting booked out. This is the wrong approach. And instead, 
instead what you should do is whenever you go to a vehicle to check it out after it's been returned you should prep the car at that time and take in check-in photos whenever you're at the vehicle these check-in photos are now good for 24 hours and it leaves your vehicle open to be able to be booked for that entire 24 hour period so you could theoretically be eating dinner sitting on the couch taking a shower or even laying in bed and your car could get booked out and you don't have to do anything extra on your end because that car is already ready so by having always available turned on you give yourself the flexibility to have your cars booked out that are prepped and ready to go. But if you were to say have your availability blocked off from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., even if you have a car that's prepped and ready to go, it's not going to be able to be booked out during this period of time. And that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense if the car is ready to go. And so what I recommend doing is keeping 24-7 availability open. Have your cars always available. And then what you'll want to do for periods of time where a car either isn't ready to go or you don't want a car being booked out is to simply block it off in the calendar. For example, if HP and I are out doing something and a car is getting returned and we know that we're not going to be able to make it back to that car in four or five or six hours, we will simply block off that car in the calendar for that period of time to prevent it going out. Or a very common scenario is at night whenever we're asleep. We, of course, don't want a car to be booked out at 1 a.m. for a 3 a.m. pickup time, so every night right before we go to bed, we simply block off the cars in their calendars until 6 a.m. the next morning. I wake up at 5 a.m. every day, so this gives me plenty of time to go through the app, make sure that all guests have sent their ID verification, and if I need to, I can cancel any messages or contact Turo support. This keeps our availability open and as flexible as possible while also preventing people from renting out our cars whenever we don't want them to be rented. And I get a lot of questions saying, well, doesn't that take a lot of time? And the answer is really no. Because of the fact that the majority of our cars are on bookings and thus we don't have to worry about blocking them off, we only have to worry about the cars that are sitting at our lot that don't have a booking within the next 24 hours. And typically this is anywhere between two and four cars. And to go through the app and calendar block two to four cars, it really only takes a couple of minutes. And the fifth and probably the most effective way to make more money with Turo is to have one hour advance notice turned on. This means that somebody could book your car right now and pick up that car within one hour. This strategy is very similar to the previous point that I talked about, 24-7 availability, and what you need to keep in mind with one hour advance notice is that this doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have to be a slave to your car and constantly be worried that a car is going to be booked out with only one hour notice. And the reason for this is that first, Turo does require a three hour buffer time between reservations. So if you have a car that got returned at 3 p.m., that car isn't going to be able to be booked out for 4 p.m. even if somebody wants to book it out for a one-hour notice because Turo requires a three-hour buffer between reservations in order to give you time to clean the car, which means that if a car gets returned at 3, the absolute earliest that that car could get booked out again would be 6 p.m. that same day. It also means that if your car is getting returned and you're not able to accommodate that car going out on a one-hour rental, all you have to do is simply block it off in the calendar. Let's say, for example, your car is getting returned at 1 p.m but you know that you're not going to be able to make it to that car and prep it until about 6 p.m. because you're at work, what you could do is simply go into the calendar and block off the car until 6 p.m. that day, or even 7 p.m. to allow yourself a larger buffer. With one hour advance notice, you can use calendar blocks to strategically prevent people from booking your car in times that you don't want them to book it, but it still allows for the openness across your entire fleet to allow this whenever your cars are ready to go. Because if you have a car that's checked in, cleaned, and ready to go, why wouldn't you want it to have a one hour advance notice? The amount of one hour advance renters who rent out Turo cars is absolutely insane. And if you are somebody who isn't currently doing a one hour advance notice, you are absolutely leaving money on the table. In fact, I would be willing to guarantee that if you are somebody who implements one hour advance notice on your fleet, you will see an improvement in earnings and overall booking rates. The majority of my bookings come in within a one hour notice, and I guarantee that you will see an improvement if you implement this as well. But there you guys have it, my six tips for making more money on Turo. Like always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Remember, to check out some of the resources down in the description below. I know that tax season is here and many Turo hosts are wondering how they can organize their books and get their taxes in line. I highly recommend my accounting group, Shared Economy Tax. They are absolutely amazing and they have a ton of experience in the car sharing space. You can check them out down in the description below. And like always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.